Good afternoon, Leslie, and thank you so Good afternoon, much. Good afternoon, Kim. I am so excited to talk to you a little bit more about your work and your upcoming projects um, at the Western Cape Education Department. Leslie, you are a powerful example of a woman leading the way in the construction industry. Tell me a little bit more about your journey and your passion for the built sector. Okay, so it started off as a passion for numbers, and I've still got the passion for numbers and accounting and financial matters. So it started off as that. And I didn't get the opportunity to go to university straight off to school. So I then find myself working as an admin kind of person in the tenders department of Marin Roberts. And that's how I then, you know, um, found that challenging and, and got them to sponsor me. Um, and I studied quantity surveying. So that's where the journey started. And I stayed at Marin Roberts for 21 years and then left there and, you know, um, went to other construction companies until I ended up, um, it's a lot of years, so I've got to summarize it. <laughs> um, uh, um, so then I ended up at the education department in 2012. And I mean, and that's a, th that part of the journey has been slightly different and very interesting because it brought the education um, you know, part to it, and it, it, so it stayed interesting, fortunately, because it's a combination of construction and education. And I think that's why I'm so um, delighted that you're joining us, because that combination of construction and education is so important to us, and I think that I'd, I'd like to find out a bit more about how you're leading efforts to strengthen the resilience of schools' infrastructure in the face of continuous pressure, such as vandalism and social unrest. Okay, um, so the, um, the designs play a big part in the resilience. So I think for me, um, to influence designs, to drive the designs so that they are aesthetically pleasing, yet functional, and simple because a fancy design could lead to maintenance that's not affordable. So it must be functional, um, include all the green initiatives so that it's sustainable and resilient. Um, so that, And then very importantly, to fit into the um, context and the surroundings that the building finds itself. So those, it's a lot of things and every, build, every school obviously is in a different place and, and so all of those circumstances that I explained are, are different and you've got to look at each one individually and combine them, I think, so that it is successful and resilient um, going forward, yeah. So it's a combination, I think, of all of those things um, that make up the resilience. And then the vandalism, obviously, you know, I mean, that that's a, plays a big part, especially in the township schools. And um, so, so I think, like, there you can position the school so that it's visible um, to, to the community and also maybe put a part of the school um, in a position that, that people can use it for, for maybe evening classes or events so that there's people on site. So, so that kind of thing, that's just an example of how it can fit into the design. And yeah, so those are just a few. Sure. And what is your strategy when it comes to the designing and building of schools of the future? Um, the schools of the future must be, I think, a combination they must have a lot more um, e-learning, digital, IT kind of capacity. So it will be less about the infrastructure and combining all of the e-learning um, components. Um, they must be more flexible and, and more hybrid, I think. They're very rigid at the moment. And, you know, we come back from all the different um, apartheid regimes and, you know, different sectors at different types of schools, both for them drive through Mitchell's plane and you'll still see the legacy of that. And so so we we have to have a hybrid where schools are more flexible. Where spaces are not used for one function only, where they can be so so for instance a hall can be used for events or divided into learning centers. Um, 
you know, so I think we've got to make the schools more um, and, and more accommodating. There's lots of um, special needs learners out there that can't be accommodated. So how can we have a school that's got a special wing for those learners that's attached to the school? Um, so those kind of things, instead of just the primary school, just the high school that fits in the box, just the, that kind of school, you know, um, and then the support services like the uh, um, support subjects, the, the, the we call it STEAM, but um, it's the arts, the technical, you know, how can that fit into the school? And a network of schools. So we've just got to integrate and, and I think be more flexible in the new designs. The designs, as I said previously, have got to be functional. They've got to be designs of the future that are going to serve us for, for many years to come. That serves all, not just a certain sector of um yeah. So it's really difficult. I mean things change all the time and the the pandemic I mean brought us some new lessons that we we didn't expect to learn, um, but I think we must be um, ready for, for for times that are going to change quite rapidly, and so flexibility, I think, is is a, a big a key factor. Leslie, talking about change and overcoming various obstacles, the Western Cape Education Department is hoping to empower various communities through its various infrastructure projects. Can you tell me about plans in place to uplift and maintain technical and vocational skills schools, um, which will likely impact um, areas that you've mentioned, such as on the Cape Flats? Yeah, so... So just to give you a little bit of background into that, I think that we all know about the um, unemployment and, the, you know, that the skills are not aligned to the jobs that are available. So I think the technical talks to that. And from a school level, we're trying to um, feed more learners into a technical stream. Um, so it includes um, new technical schools. We're trying to, to do a three-stream model, which is academic, and technical and school of skills to save obviously on infrastructure and to have a very efficient um, model running um, and then there are some new technical schools where they're only technical or school of skills um, and then we're trying to upgrade the existing technical schools so that the, it's more effective and more learners are actually completing and reaching the grade 12 level um, so it's a comprehensive, um, it's a, a vision-inspired priority of the Western Cape government. And so each department has got um, their own priorities. We've got safety and security and technical schools. So it's, um, it's a broad, comprehensive program of trying to improve technical education to place the technical schools in, in the right area. So we've got one on the in the plans in Saldana. So it, it's on the border of the industry and, and that's um, what we will do. The, those industries will form partnerships with us to um, offer learnerships and employment. To. So all of that needs to be taken into account. And I mean, we all know that it's a poor community that can't afford to go to university that need the jobs so so we're catering you know for for um, learners with technical ability um, who and to give them another option and the school of skills um, is to support those learners and then um, guide them into the correct stream so that they also doing physical um, activities and can be productive and busy and and you know feel that they can cope with the type of education that they and then there's the uh, vocational which um, which you know offers practical skills as well so it's technical vocational school of skills alongside academic so that you have the same teacher who can teach um, across the various streams certainly and talking a little bit about vision 
what is on the top of the Western Cape Education Department's wish list when it comes to future infrastructure projects? You know, what is needed and what is what is hard to come by? Um, we need, well, uh, you know, the budget is a big issue. We've got a huge backlog. I mean, we've got annual growth in this province of between 15 and 20,000 learners per year. So, I mean, the, the budget allocations can't keep up with those with that kind of growth. It's not sustainable. It's not. So, we want to forge a sustainable fiscal path. You know, something we know that's manageable. That's what we can afford. That's you know. So, um, it would have to be the hybrid models of you know smaller schools, but a larger that can take the same number of learners but be a more digital way of learning. Um, and, um, and I think, you know, we want to see innovation. We want to see things, you know, move on. We, we, we can't be stuck. So we want to see um, schools of excellence, specialist schools. There's um, talk now of an aviation and we're trying to link the aviation subjects either to an existing school or you know, some schools offer the subjects until grade nine and then they become specialists from grade 10. So that, you know, you've got that vision of that's what I want to be. And there is a path that you can follow to achieve that dream. So the arts, you know, acting. Um, so, so that kind of things, I mean, there's never been. And the only way we're going to achieve it is, is to simplify the model by going more digital, um, using IT to a much larger extent so that we can then find budget to focus on the fun side. I mean, for the for the foundation phase, fun is very important. Yeah. Um, and there's no, you know, you can't go digital with grade R to three. Maybe four to seven, you know, you could start introducing it and then at high school, um, to a much larger degree. But the grade R, you need to make these spaces fun. You need to make it exciting, you know. I mean, we're far behind, I think. And, and so all of those exciting new... Um, the other thing is the green initiatives. We want to make schools self-reliant. I mean, the municipal bowls, schools are, you know, being strangled by municipal bowls. So, so that, you know, what kind of green initiatives, new things, I think innovation, future fit, you know, where are we going? Are the, is the infrastructure that we're providing suitable for the future? Or is it from 20 years ago? So <laughs> I think that for me, you know, how do you get to the future? It's exciting. And, you know, and partnerships, I think, is a big part of that. We've got to look at, um, you know, we can't do it on our own. Um, so we've got to look at partnerships and now we can partner with businesses and donors. I agree. I think the future is exciting. And I also think the future is female. And as a woman leading such significant changes in both the education and both sector, what is your message for young girls hoping to get into the sector? I think um, I'll share something with you that stuck with me. My mother was a very simple woman, but she said to me, do more than is required of you. Go that extra mile. It's worth it. Don't think what's it going to get me. Just do it and work harder than, you know, than you need to. And just, I think, stick by, I mean, I struggled. It was not easy, you know, there, there's some construction views that I really battled with in the beginning, you know, you, you don't, I didn't just get it, um, and, but I stuck in, and so I think stick by it and believe in yourself, I think, you know, don't give up um, and um, keep your head down and back chat the men. <laughs> Leslie, thank you so much for your time. It was a pleasure to speak with you. And we are definitely looking forward to what the Western Cape Education Department has to offer South Africa in the coming months and years. And we look forward to hopefully welcoming you to, to the African Construction Expo in 2021. Okay, thank you very much for this opportunity. Eh?